Hello everyone. Today we're going to be going over a commander deck based off of a new commander from the Strixhaven commander decks. Uh, his name is Osgir the Reconstructor. He's a Boros commander and he's very um, artifact heavy. Um, I thought he was a really cool commander, um, very different for Boros, um, and I just really like the artifact theme in uh, Commander. Yeah, so let's get into it. So Osgur himself, he's 4 mana for a 4-4 four, four legendary creature giant artificer, and he has Vigilance, and he has two abilities. So his first ability is 1 mana, Sacrifice an artifact, a target creature you control gets plus two plus zero until on a turn. And then he has another ability of X and tap, exile an artifact card with mana value X from your graveyard, and you get to create two tokens that are copies of the exiled card. Activate this ability only as a sorcery. Um, so the first ability there can get artifacts into your graveyard, and uh, and it can pump any creature that you control. At first, when I first read him, I thought it was himself getting plus two plus zero, um, but that's not the case. You can pump one of your flyers or a creature with trample, or you can just pump uh, Osgir himself to get in for some commander damage, and he has vigilance too, so he'll also be a blocker. And then uh, that X ability is where you get really good value. You exile any artifact card from your graveyard, and you create two token copies of that card. So first up, we're going to have some artifact creatures. Uh, first up, we have Triplicate Titan. He has 9 mana for a 9-9 golem. And he has Flying, Vigilance, and Trample. And when he dies, you create a 3-3 golem with Flying, a 3-3 golem with Vigilance, and a 3-3 golem with Trample. Uh, 9 mana might seem like a lot, but this deck has a lot of sweepers and a lot of control effects. And then also it has a lot of uh, artifact mana too. Um, so getting up to 9 is not too bad. And then if you do exile this guy with Osgir, you get two token copies of it. And then when those two token copies dies, now you make six different 3-3s. Three so it can get a lot of value. We have Ruin Grinder, 6 mana for a 7-4 with Menace. And when he dies, each player may discard their hand and draw seven cards. So on a die effect, this is basically a Wheel of Fortune. And then he also has a Mountain Cycling ability. Two mana, discard this card, and you can search your library for a Mountain card. Reveal it and put it into your hand. And here we have Scrap Trawler. It's three mana for a 3-2. And when Scrap Trawler or another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return to your hand target artifact card in your graveyard with lesser converted mana cost. Um, it may seem a little counterproductive to return artifacts from your graveyard um, because of Osgir's ability, but this is just really good value. And we also have Mirror Retriever along the same lines. Two mana for a 1-1 one, one. Uh, when Mirror Retriever dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. We have Duplicant, is 6 mana for an artifact creature, 2-4, with Imprint. So when Duplicant enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-token creature. And as long as a card exiled with Duplicant is a creature card, Duplicant has the power, toughness, and creature types of the last creature card exiled with Duplicant. Next up we have Mirror Battlesphere, 7 mana for a 4-7 artifact creature. When Mirror Battlesphere enters the battlefield, create 4 1-1 one, one colorless mirror tokens. And also when Mirror Battlesphere attacks, you may tap X, untap mirror you control. And if you do, yeah, Mirror Battlesphere gets plus X plus 0 until end of turn, and it deals X damage to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. We have another uh, new card from Strixhaven here. This is Alibu, Ancient Witness. It's 5 mana for a 4-5 legendary artifact creature. And other artifacts you control have haste. And then also whenever one or more artifact creatures you control attacks, Alibu deals X damage to any target and you scry X, where X is the number of tapped artifacts you control. 
Next up we have Jorah's Familiar. It's four mana for a 2-2 two, two flying. And Historic Spells you cast cost one less to cast. Historics are artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. So this does make your commander always cost one less, because uh, Osgir is legendary, of course. And it makes all of your artifact spells cost one less. We also have Palladium here. It's three mana for a 2-2, two, two, and he just has an ability of tap, add two colorless to your mana pool. And we have a Solemn, it's four mana for a 2-2. Two, two. When he enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. And when Solemn dies, you also get to draw a card. We have a Blightsteel Colossus, it's 12 mana for an 11-11, Trample, in fact, indestructible. And if Blightsteel Colossus would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal Blightsteel Colossus and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. So he's not too good with Osgir, but he is good with all the other artifact synergies in the deck. And you can just get him out and just cast him regularly too. We also have Filigree Familiar, it's 3 mana for a 2-2. Two, two. And when he enters the battlefield, you gain two life, and when he dies, you draw a card. Uh, next up, we have Foundry Inspector. It's three mana for a 3-2, and artifact spells you cast cost one less. And here we have Burnished Heart. It's three mana for a 2-2, two, two, and you can pay three mana, sacrifice it, and you search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. We also have Meteor Golem, 7 mana for a 3-3. When he enters the battlefield, you just destroy target permanent and opponent controls, non-land permanent. We have another big boy here. We got Frexian Triniform. It's 9 mana for a 9-9 Golem. And when he dies, you create 3-3 three, three, three colorless Golems. And then he also has an Encore ability, which is 12 mana. And you exile this card from your graveyard. For each opponent, create a token copy that attacks that opponent this turn if able. They gain haste, and then you sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step. Activate this ability only as a sorcery. Um, so with the Encore, if you ever get up to that high, uh, if you have, let's say, three opponents, you would create three token copies that all attack, and then all three of those copies, when they die, they all create three 3-3 three, three golems. Our next section here is going to be the ramp section. So first off, we have Basalt Monolith, which is three mana. It doesn't untap during your untap stop, and then you can tap it to add three colorless or pay three to untap it. We also have Mind Stone, which is two mana artifact, tap, add a colorless, and then you can also pay one, tap it, and sacrifice it to draw a card. Of course, we have Boro Signet. It's two mana, pay one mana, and tap it. Add a red of white, red and white to your mana pool. We have Talisman of Conviction. Just two mana artifact. Tap to add a colorless, or you can add a red or a white, and then it deals one damage to you. Of course, we have a Soul Ring. And, of course, we also have an Arcane Signet. We're also running Commander Sphere, which is three mana... Artifact, tap, add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity, and then you can also just sacrifice it to draw a card. We also have Icar Wellspring, just two mana for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield or is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. This is really good with Osgir, um, because when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. Then you can sacrifice it to Osgir's first ability to draw another card. And then you can use Osgir's second ability to just pay two mana and create two token copies of this, which both of them would enter and draw you two more cards. And then you can sacrifice those tokens to draw two more cards. Along the same lines is Mycosynth Wellspring, which is two mana for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield or is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you can search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into your hands. We also have a Sword of Feast and Famine. It's three mana artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from black and from green. 
and whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card, and you untap all lands you control, and it equips for two. We also have Basilisk Collar, which is one mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature has Death Touch and Life Link, and equipped for two mana. We have Lightning Greaves, two mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature has Haste and Shroud, and the equip cost is zero. We also have a Sun Forger, which is three mana artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus four plus zero. And then it also has this very good ability of pay two mana, a red and a white, and you unattach Sunforger. You can search your library for a red or white instant card with converted mana cost four or less, and cast that card without paying its mana cost, then shuffle. And the equip cost of Sunforger is three. We also have Swiftfoot Boots, which is two mana artifact equipment. Equip creature has Hexproof and Haste, and it equips for one. Our, uh, our next theme here is going to be just uh, regular creatures, so either red or white creatures, not artifacts, but a lot of them do help out your artifact theme. So we have a new card here, Loshiel Clockwork Scholar. It's three mana for a 2-4, and uh, it reads, Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to attacking artifact creatures you control. And a very good ability here, whenever one or more artifact creatures enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. And this ability triggers only once each turn. We also have Dig Site Engineer, which is 3 mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may pay 2 colorless. If you do, you create a 0-0 zero, zero colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus 1 plus 1 for each artifact you control. We also have Giver of Ruins, which is one mana for a 1-2, and a tap. Another target creature you control gains protection from colorless or from the color of your choice until end of turn. It's a good way to protect Osgear. We also have a Stoneforge Mystic, which is two mana for a 1-2. When Stoneforge Mystic enters the battlefield, you can search your library for an equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. And then also you can pay two mana and tap her to put an equipment card from your hands onto the battlefield. We also have Selfless Spirit, which is two mana for a 2-1 flying, and you can sacrifice it, and creatures you control gain indestructible until on the turn. Uh, this is very good because we're running a whole bunch of Wraths in this deck, so if you sacrifice Selfless Spirit, your whole team gets indestructible, and then when you cast a Wrath, uh, only your opponent's creatures will get destroyed. We also have a Sun Titan, 6 mana for a 6-6 six, six Vigilance, and when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you can return target permanent card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. We also have a Thopter Engineer, it's 3 mana for a 1-3. When Thopter Engineer uh, enters the battlefield, you create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying, and then also artifact creatures you control have haste. And here we have a Goblin Engineer. It's two mana for a 1-2. When he enters the battlefield, you can search your library for any artifact card and put it into your graveyard, then shuffle. And he also has an ability of pay one red mana to sacrifice an artifact. Red mana, tap, sacrifice an artifact. And return target artifact card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's kind of like a mini Osgear there. We also have Feldon of the Third Path. It's three mana for a 2-3 with an uh, ability of pay three mana, tap them, create a token that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste, and then you sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Feldon is also like a, like a mini Osgir, um, but he can be a lot better with some of the really beefy creatures like Triplicate Titan, um, or Frexian Triniform, because he can just pay 3 mana instead of 9 to create a token copy of it. We also have Mother of Ruins. It's 1 mana for a 1-1. One, one. Tap it, target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. 
We also have a Draneth Magistrate. It's two mana for a 1-3. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. Um, this card's really good in Commander because it stops your opponents from casting their commanders. We also have a Zerda the Dawn Waker. It's three mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, companion ability doesn't matter. And then uh, abilities you activate that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate. This effect can't reduce the mana in that cost to less than one. And then also an ability of pay one mana, tap it to target creature can't block this turn. Um, basically, this ability is good with Osgir because it makes Osgir's um, second ability, the X ability, cost two less. Next up, we have Tashar Ancestor's Apostle. It's four mana for a 2 2 flying, and whenever you cast a historic spell, you can return target creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard rate right to the battlefield. Um, next up, we're going to have all of the wrath effects that are in the deck. So we have Devastating Mastery, which is six mana, um, but you can also just pay four rather than pay the spell's mana cost. And basically it reads destroy all non-land permanents, but if you chose the four mana cost option, an opponent chooses two non-land permanents they control and return them to their hand. So it can be used as a political uh, effect and a wrath all in one. We also have Hour of Revelation, which is six mana, but it can cost three less to cast if there are ten or more permanents, non-land permanents on the battlefield. So at that point, it would only cost three mana, and this just destroys all non-land permanents. We have a Day of Judgment, and four mana, destroy all creatures. We got the Mystical Archive art here. We also have Austere Command, which is uh, flexible. So it's six mana, and you get to choose two of these. Destroy all artifacts, destroy all enchantments, destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three or less, or destroy all creatures with converted mana cost four or greater. We also have a Wrath of God, which is a four mana, destroy all creatures, they can't be regenerated. We have Undo Inversion, which is eight mana, destroy all non-land permanents. Um, but the good part about this card is it is a dual face card, so the other side of it, the other half of it is just a land that enters the battlefield tapped and can just add a white mana. We also have Slash the Ranks, which is 5 mana, destroy all creatures and planeswalkers except for commanders. We have uh, just a couple of targeted removal spells. So we have Swords the Plowshares, which is 1 mana instant, exile target creature, its controller gains life equal to its power. Once again, the Mystical Archive art there. We have a Path to Exile, which is one mana, one white mana for an instance. Um, this one is the textless version, so it doesn't have any text on it, but most people know what Path does. It exiles target creature, and then its controller can search their library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. We also have a newer card from Strixhaven here, Rip Apart, which is two mana, and you get to choose one of these abilities. It either deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker, or you can destroy target artifact or enchantment. We also have Sajiri Shelter, which is two mana for an uh, in instant. Target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. And the nice part about this one, once again, is it is a dual face card. The other side is just the land that enters the battlefield tapped. And next up we have uh, Thrill of Possibility, two mana instant. Um, and as an additional cast a cost a spell, you discard a card, and then you get to draw two cards. There's a good amount of effects like this in the deck, because discarding cards can be quite good for you, especially if it's an artifact, because then you can just make copies of it with Osgir. We have a split card here, Wear and Tear. Wear is two mana, destroy target artifact, and Tear is one white mana, destroy target enchantment. And then you can fuse it, where if you can pay both, both costs, so it would be three mana. And if you do, you choose both halves. We also have Heliod's Intervention, which is X and two white for an instant, and you choose one. You can either destroy X target artifacts and or enchantments, 
or target player gains twice X life. We also have a Boros Charm, which is two mana. Um, Boros Charm deals four damage to target player. You choose one of these abilities. Permanents you control are indestructible this turn, or target creature gains double strike until end of turn. Um, the indestructible one is really good with all of the uh, wraths that we just went through. Make your whole team indestructible and then destroy the board. We also have a Valakut Awakening, which is three mana for an instant. Put any number of cards from your hands on the bottom of your library, then draw that many cards plus one. And once again, this is a dual face card too. The other side is just a land that enters the battlefield tapped and add a red mana. We also have Amiria's Call, which is seven mana sorcery. Create two four four white angel warrior creature tokens with flying, and then also non angel creatures you control gain indestructible until your next turn. And uh, this is a dual face card that can enter the battlefield untapped if you pay three life, and it just taps to add a white mana. We also have Shatter Skull Smashing, which is X and two red. Um, Shatter Skull Smashing deals X damage divided as you choose among up to two target creatures and or planeswalkers. If X is six or more, um, Shatter Skull Smashing deals twice X damage divided as you choose among them instead. And uh, once again, this one's a dual face card that can enter the battlefield untapped if you pay three life, and it taps to add a red. We also have Cathartic Reunion, 2 mana, has an additional cast a cost of spell, you discard 2 cards, and then this one draws 3. We have a very cool card here, Trash, Trash for Treasure, which is 3 mana, has an additional cost to cast this spell, you sacrifice an artifact, and then you can return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Next up we have a Faithless Looting. This one is the uh, Japanese alternate art from Strixhaven. Faithless Looting is one red mana. You draw two cards, then discard two cards. And it also has Flashback, which is that little three right there. So it flashbacks for three mana, and then you just do the same thing. You draw two cards, then discard two cards. We also have a really good win condition right here. Wake the Past, seven mana. Return all artifact cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. They gain haste until end of turn. We have Thrilling Discovery. Two mana sorcery. You gain two life. Then you may discard two cards. And if you do, you draw three cards. And we have the Lone Planeswalker in the deck, which is Duretti Scrap Savant. Which is four mana. He starts at three loyalty. Is plus two is discard up to two cards, then draw that many cards. It's minus two is sacrifice an artifact. If you do, you return target artifact uh, card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And then his emblem is a minus 10, where you get uh, the emblem with uh, whenever an artifact is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. And then lastly, we will have the land base. Um, we have an artifact land here at Darksteel Citadel. It is indestructible and it taps to add a colorless. We also have Great Furnace, artifact land that can tap to add a red to your mana pool. And we also have Ancient Den, which is an artifact land taps to add a white to your mana pool. Here we have the uh, time shifted old border version. We have a Buried Ruin, which is uh, tap to add a colorless, and it also has an ability of pay two mana and tap it, sacrifice it, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. We have Spire of Industry, which can tap just to add a colorless, or you can pay one life and you add one mana of any color to your mana pool. And you can only activate this, this ability if you control an artifact. We have Inventor's Fair, which is a legendary land. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more artifacts, you gain one life. It taps to add a colorless, and then it also has an ability of pay four mana and tap it and sacrifice it. Search your library for an artifact card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle. And you can only activate this, this ability if you control three or more artifacts. And then we have a lot of red-white dual lands. So we have Spectator Seeing. We have Needle Verge Pathway. Clifftop Retreat. Temple of Triumph, 
Command Tower, uh, Windscarred Crag, Battlefield Forge, Inspiring Vantage. We have a couple fetch lands. We have Windswept Heath, Flooded Strand, Arid Mesa. We have a Sacred Foundry. And then we just have some basic plains. And we also have some basic mountains. And so that is the deck there. Um, if you like these deck texts, be sure to like this video, comment on it if you have any suggestions, um, or if you want to see like the deck list, I'll probably post that soon. Um, and then also, you know, subscribe. Um, I do a lot of um, box openings on the channel, and then I also am trying to do as many uh, deck texts as I can with different com all the different commanders that keep on coming out and trying to build these decks and make sure I have all the cards for them. So, all right. All right, have a good day, everyone. I'll see you soon.